Afternoon guys, welcome back to the Journal of the Yurt. I'm glad to be back in here. Um, I've had quite a few things going on lately. I had to shoot that Survival Adventure Network shoot, which incidentally got posted to this channel um, because I'm having problems at YouTube right now getting onto my Survival Adventure Network channel logging in. So I had to get it to you guys, so I posted on this channel knowing that everybody would watch it there anyway. Um, but uh, so we had that shoot, and then I had to go this last weekend to the Indianapolis 1500 Gun and Knife Show. So I've been pretty busy, and I haven't been able to shoot a lot of video lately. Um, but I wanted to do a second part in the series Stock and Trade, and I wanted to show you some of the things that I got this weekend, both at the gun show and received in the mail while I was gone, and kind of go over those things with you to show them to you a little bit. Um, so first, let's talk real quick about the gun show. You know. When you go to these gun shows, it's always good. You know, the Indy 1500 is so big, and I met so many great people, and, you know, just a lot of people that watch the videos, and, oh, I love the Yurt series, oh, I love the Long Hunter series. And, you know, that was just fantastic for me because it just tells me, you know, that, that people are watching, and I got a lot of good ideas from people about other videos, other Survival Adventure Network scenarios and things to do in the future. Um, and I appreciate that, guys. I love all the feedback that I get from you guys. Um, so when you're walking around these gun shows, you know, you're always looking for cool things or neat things or things that you want to add to your kit. Um, you know, I'm pretty well stocked as far as firearms go. I really don't look for too many firearms um, unless it's just something special that jumps out at me um, that I want. I'm always on the lookout for M6 Scouts. And uh, incidentally, I did see an M6 Scout at the show this weekend. Um, it had a scope on it. It was a Czechoslovakian knockoff. I think Springfield actually sent that gun over to Czechoslovakia for manufacture um, in the late 70s sometime or maybe early 80s um, when they quit making it at Springfield Armory and incidentally now they've quit making it all together but this was a Czechoslovakian marked uh, M6 Scout it was not a Springfield Armory and it was $850 which is way way out of common man range um, you know as far as I'm concerned, it's probably the most bulletproof survival rifle that was ever made. I have two of them myself. I had three, and I gave one to my lead instructor, Steve Critter Davis. Um, but the, for me, the 12-gauge shotgun is the king. Um, would I take a 12-gauge over my M6 Scout? I'd be a hard choice. You know, the M6 is a pretty versatile gun, um, especially with the GunAdapters.com thing going on now, where I can shove another 22 adapter in that bottom barrel and shoot over under 22-22 for a backup shot. I can shoot 45 long Colt or 410 shotgun out of the lower chamber. So, you know, it's it's a pretty big toss-up. But 12 gauge is going to kill anything there is, and you can get so many adapters for it that I think it's just the bulletproof way to go. Um, they're cheap, they're common man, and so anyway, I was looking around at the gun show this weekend. I want to show you a few things that I picked up. Um, the first thing I picked up was just this uh, battery holder pack, and it holds six uh, AAA batteries. I picked this up from a buddy that actually carries our product. It's a flashlight dealer there, and I just think it's a good idea. I always try to keep a set of spare batteries in with my headlight in the bag, so I've got my Petzl Tactica headlight, and now I've got six batteries I can put in there into, you know, a small pouch that it doesn't take up a lot of room in my pack. It has a drawstring on it, and my spare batteries are always going to be there, and I've got two sets. And the thing was only a couple of bucks, so I thought, well, that's a worthwhile investment because it keeps the batteries separated. It keeps them in one place. You always know where they're at. fits right in my small pouch. My pouch has got a clip on it that we'll talk about here in a few minutes with another product that I got this weekend I want to show you. But I just thought that was a pretty neat product and something good to have in your kit. It doesn't cost a lot of money, and it's it saves space as far as jumbling up your batteries go. It keeps them safe. Um, and I just think it's a good organizational item. Um, the next item that I picked up, again, going back to the 21st Century Long Hunter theme, um, I picked up this bullet mold, and this is pretty old. Um, I paid about 30 bucks for this, so it wasn't something that I got real cheap. Um, but it is about, I'm going to guess, a 32 caliber ball mold, maybe something like that. You can see the size, if I hold it up there to the side, I think you can kind of see the size of it. And it's got a sprue cutter built into it, very similar to what the 18th century uh, Long Hunter ball molds had that they carried in their bags. And this is very similar to that type of ball mold. Um, would fit in an 18th century bag and be no problem as far as being period proper, um, if that's what you want to call it. Um, some people are a little bit anal about that stuff. But this is a good thing to carry in your bag if you're carrying, you know, the 12 gauge for the fact that you want that versatility because now you have the ability to melt down lead 
that you come across or you find or you've got in your kit, maybe it's sinkers or something like that, or maybe it's smaller shot, to make a 32 caliber round ball so now you can make buckshot. And you can also make shot for a slingshot very easy with this. Um, like I said, it's got a built-in sprue cutter to cut the sprue off the top where the, the lead over drips on top of the mold itself. And so for what the room that this takes up, it's a very versatile item to have in your kit. Um, I could make sinkers with this if I needed to. I could melt the lead down. Um, while they're still warm, I could slice into them with a knife to put a slit in the middle of them, baton it in there, and then I have a split shot. So you can do a lot with a mold like this. It doesn't take up a lot of room in your kit. So I thought that was a really good item, and I snatched it up as soon as I saw it. Um, the other thing I picked up was just kind of a novelty item that I kind of liked, so I picked it up. I'm kind of a compass collector. I like old type compasses. And this is a reproduction. It says the Mary Rose, London, 1515 to 1545 on the front of it. And it's brass box. And it has a compass inside of it, very similar to what they used in the 18th century. And it has a built-in a built-in sundial on the top of it. And it's bigger than the type compass is that most of the reenactors I used to know and hang around with carry. It's bigger than that. It's about the size of a skull tin or a, a grizzly tin, um, but it's nice patinaed brass, and I just thought it was kind of neat, so I picked it up for my own personal kit. Um, I generally just deal with general direction anyway as far as the compass goes. I don't worry too much about exact bearings unless I've got a map. Um, and then, you know, I also carry a small brass True Nord compass as well for just general direction. I can just throw that right in my pocket real easy or in my belt pouch, pull it out, check general direction and go. This was just more of a novelty item. Um, the one thing I picked up that was a really good deal this weekend I thought was, I found a guy who had a bunch of army wool sweaters and these are the old type wool sweaters that they issued um, in the army back in the uh, late 70s and, eight, and early 80s um, to the mid 80s and some of these are acrylic and some of them are 100% wool and you have to pay attention to what you're buying when you see these sweaters but I looked through what the guy had on his table and I picked out five that were extra large and they say in them 100% wool okay and I asked the guy, I said, what do you want for these sweaters? And I was expecting to hear, you know, 20 or 30 bucks a piece, because that's about what they sell for on eBay. They're in really, really good shape. Um, two of them were brand spanking new. The one I'm wearing now is brand spanking new. And one other one looked like they'd never even been worn or issued. This one's got a small hole in it right here on one of the uh, neck areas. Sew that up in two minutes, no problem. And one of them had a small hole down at the bottom in the part that gathers around your waist. Five bucks a piece. I bought every one that he had that was an extra large at that price. You know, so for 25 bucks, I got five sweaters for the price of what one would cost me off eBay. All 100% wool. You know, you can't pass deals like that up. Um, the next thing that I wanted to show you um, is basically the shirt that I'm wearing. And what this is, I'll show you this company's card that they sent me. Um, it's called Empire Wool and Canvas Company. And here's their card. So you can look them up on the internet if you'd like. I'll try to put a link on this video as well. Um, I saw my buddy uh, Steve Davis, my lead instructor at Pathfinder School, had a shirt on very similar to this, if not exactly like this, um, that he had purchased at Dirt Time 2010. And I had a guy send me a link to this company um, and said, hey, look at this shirt because it looks like it's bulletproof. It's not common man price by any means. It's very expensive, but it looks like it's bulletproof. So I called these guys up and I looked at their website and you know they asked me, they said, do you want 85-15 or do you want 100% wool? I said, well, I want 100% wool. And I think this is called like a boreal hunting shirt or a boreal, boreal bushcraft shirt. Um, it's 100% wool. It's got snaps on the cuff to close it down. It's got ties up the top. It's got a, a gather inside just like my anorak does. It's got a big full hood on the back of it. Um, it does have a drawstring on the waist as well. And inside the pockets, you know, it's very interesting. It's got one of these front pockets like a hoodie would have on it. And the only thing bad I've always not liked about those type pockets is they're great for warming your hands. They suck for putting stuff in because stuff seems to fall out of them. Well, these guys have done some very special stuff with this. It's got a divider inside of it, and it's got actual pockets inside three places where you can actually put, like, your fire steel or something like that or your headlamp or whatever you want to put in there. And it's also got two clips inside here that actually have D-rings on them. So I can take my headlamp, clip it to that D-ring, stuff it in that pocket, and I know there's no way I'm going to lose that headlamp. And that's important to me. Um, I think from talking to these guys, you know that they're so busy that 
they're they're like booked up for a year in advance. I mean, their season is like booked before it ever starts as far as how many shirts they can make. So there's kind of a waiting list to get these things. Um, I was very fortunate when I talked to them. They were like, hey, we'll just ship you one out. I want you to try it out and see what you think of it. Um, it's about 32 degrees today outside. I do have a wool sweater and this thing. Um, I'm in the yurt with no fire. It's about 40 degrees in this yurt right now. But I got to tell you, I'm sweating, boys. This thing is hot. Um, I think this is probably one of the mo more bulletproof shirts that I've ever seen, if not one of the most bulletproof wool shirts I've ever seen. But like I said, you know, they are expensive, but the craftsmanship on them is just unbelievable. I mean, they have nice steel grommets for eyelets in them, both on the neckline and as well as on the waist. Um, for the drawstring areas of this thing and it's just a gorgeous made piece of gear so you know again this empire and this is not an advertisement for those guys necessarily i'm not getting anything out of this they're not paying me to advertise their product i just really want to show you guys when i find something that's bulletproof or bomb proof i want you guys to know about it and if you can afford to buy one you know buy it once you'll never have to buy it again uh, but again this is their company you know you can call these guys up and see what they've got to offer um, they make some beautiful stuff. Their work is fine. This one is 100% wool, so it's more expensive than the 8515. But, you know, to me, 100% wool is worth it every day, all day. Um, so I wanted to kind of go over some of those things with you that I procured, found, got in the mail this weekend, and things like that, and just make a quick video to let you guys know I'm back in the yurt. The yurt series is not over. Um, I'll be continuing things. I'm going to do a video that's probably going to get posted before this one on the 9-inch rifled uh, adapter for the 12-gauge. It shoots 9mm. The thing is fantastic. Um, I can't wait to see what the other calibers are going to look like. This thing is, you know, so accurate in my opinion. I couldn't shoot a pistol. In my mind, I couldn't shoot a pistol as accurate as this thing is out of my 12 gauge by any means. Um, so I want you guys to see that as well. But I'll be back with another video as soon as I can. I'll be back with another yurt video as soon as I can. We'll be doing more with the 21st Century Long Hunter series. I appreciate your support. I appreciate your time watching my videos. I thank you for supporting Survival Adventure Network and watching those videos as well. We'll be coming out with more of those. we got two scenarios that we're doing in February. I wanted to kind of give you guys an update during this video as well. So thank you for your support. It was I enjoyed meeting every one of you that I met at the Indy 1500 Gun and Knife Show this weekend and took pictures with and things like that i had a great time so again thank you very much for your support thank you for everything that you do for my family i appreciate you um, every day and that's why i keep coming back and putting out this information so you know let's all keep learning together and i appreciate you guys very much and i'll see you on the next video